US K-12 public schools, the probable cost standard ought to apply to the searches of students. Beginning with the framework, currently searches of students only need reasonable suspicion that a crime has been committed before being initiated. Adopting probable cause as a standard would increase the amount of evidence needed to conduct the search, making the process more objective. Our standard is protecting the education and keeping kids out of prison because for reasons we'll explain later, juvenile incarceration destroys student lives. With this in mind, contention one is that probable cause would encourage better disciplinary practices in schools. According to Jason Ant of the University of Florida, the last reasonable suspicion standard allows school officials to rely on searches as an easy way out for school discipline instead of investing in more targeted programs such as early intervention, restorative justice, and rehabilitation. Probable cause would make searches a last resort to be used in cases of actual safety threats where schools would have to adopt better practices for the majority of disciplinary violations. In fact, the ACLU writes that the only way to increase the implementation of better disciplinary policies is nationwide reform that would force schools to engage directly with their students on an individual basis and make it harder to act in a complacent manner. Adopting these reforms is critical, as a study from the National Juvenile Justice Network finds that when school districts limited searches and adopted disciplinary reform, youth arrests fell by 50% and crime fell by 25%. Contention 2 is that probable cause would reduce discriminatory searches. According to Sarah Foreman of the University of Detroit, the reasonable suspicion has made it so that anything and everything can be construed as reasonable, making school officials particularly susceptible to racial bias. This lax standard contributes to an abundance of unjust searches of minorities. In fact, Professor Nance finds that the odds of a warrantless search in a school with a majority minority population is 7.7 times greater under the reasonable suspicion standard. Fortunately, raising the standard to probable cause would reduce unwarranted searches. Barry Friedman of NYU writes that because probable cause would require officials to identify stronger evidence and fill out a warrant before conducting a search, it would lead them to think twice before conducting unreasonable searches and thereby avoid doing so. In fact, Jack Glaser of UC Berkeley finds that when the standard to conduct searches uh, by custom officials was increased, the amount of unjust searches fell by 75%, and racial disparities in searches were greatly reduced. He also found that because the higher standard increased the accuracy of searches, there was no associated increase in crime. This has two critical benefits, and the first is that it improves a student's trust in the system. Professor Sarah Foreman writes that when innocent students are searched without a valid reason, they feel alienated because they believe that they have been treated with distrust. When students are treated as threats to society for no apparent reason, they are more likely to turn to an oppositional culture and commit crimes in the future. That's why Rachel Johnson of American University finds that an innocent student who is searched becomes four times more likely to commit delinquent behavior in the future. Second is that it reduces unnecessary student convictions. The Harvard Law Review finds that when minorities are searched for minor offenses rather than actual threats to safety, they are more likely to face suspension and juvenile arrest for offenses as minor as possession of a pocket knife to an undeclared vial of Tylenol. In fact, the Atlantic finds that the U.S. sends 2 million children to juvenile detention every single year, 95% of whom have not committed a violent crime. When students are convicted for these minor offenses, their futures are destroyed, as Gary Sweeten of ASU finds that juvenile detention makes a student four times more likely to drop out and twice as likely to reoffend. By reducing the number of searches subjected to these frivolous searches, we can keep more kids in school and out of prison. It's for this reason that the Besh and I are very proud to have her.
know that they can be searched with only reasonable suspicion, they will be less likely to carry contraband onto school property. Conversely, if students know that a warrant must be obtained before they can be searched, they will be more tempted to bring contraband to school because they would have a reduced chance of being caught. This high standard does not mitigate drug and gun problems, but instead makes them worse. Not only does this increase in temptation lead to an actual increase in contraband use among students, but also more importantly, it leads to an increase in the perception of crime among school staff, because as they understand it, it will be easier for students to bring in contraband with a harder searching standard. This leads to an increase in harsher security measure allowed under both reasonable suspicion and probable cause, because ultimately schools prioritize safety. Berger explains, but officials everywhere feel pressure to improve the safety of students and staff. An increasingly popular quick fix strategy is to hire police and security guards. These student resource officers, or SROs, exist in schools today, but would increase even more with implementation of probable cause in order to create the effect of replacing the deterrent of reasonable suspicion. Nance explains that these armed and uniformed law enforcement officials perform multiple tasks, such as patrolling school grounds, assess assisting with investigations, and arresting students who commit crimes. Their implementation has a few harmful impacts. First is an increase in mistrust. Nance explains that SRO programs have harmful effects on the educational setting by alienating students and generating mistrust, which paradoxically leads to even more disordered violence. James of the Research Gate quantifies this by explaining that a one-minute increase in trust is associated with a 90% reduction in a student's odds of bringing a weapon to school. Second is the school-to-prison pipeline. A study published by the Justice Policy Institute finds that when schools have law enforcement on site, students are more likely to get arrested with by police instead of having discipline handled by school officials. This leads to more kids being funneled into the juvenile justice system, which is both expensive and associated with a host of negative impacts on youth. Tess quantifies this impact, writing that after police were placed on middle and high school campuses, the number of referrals to the juvenile court increased by approximately 1,248%. Most of the referrals were misdemeanor offenses previously handled in schools with school disciplinary measures. This is extremely detrimental because it leads to more students getting pushed into the criminal justice system, which is known to severely limit a young person's future potential. According to Warner of the Center for Economic and Policy Research, an extensive body of research has established that a felony conviction or time in prison makes individuals significantly less employable. In addition to that, Linda Temple quantifies the impact of life writing that the mortality rate for delinquent youth is more than four times the rate for youth in the general population. Therefore, in order to avoid the harsher security measures that decrease trust and criminalize students, we urge you to negate.
because we have probable cause, police have to think twice before searching someone, and they have to like act against their inherent bias. So, kind of question. Let's talk about these student resource officers, right? Why are they bad right now? Right now? Yeah. But why are they bad? Why are they bad right now? Well, why they're bad in just general is that they're an armed uniformed police officer on a school campus. So they can they pretty much just send people to prison, right? That's why they're bad. Now. Right. So the thing is that if it wasn't a police officer who was going to be conducting that search, it would be a teacher. Okay. And when a teacher finds a student, I don't know, doing graffiti, they don't they can't send that student to jail. They'll give them a detention. But a SRO, when they find a student doing graffiti, they are legally required to refer that student right. to the juvenile justice yes. system, which inherently increases the school to prison. Okay. We know that's not true. We'll call for uh, the department. Can I have a question? Actually, could I take one? Yeah, sure. All right. So let's talk about this trust, where you say that trust decreases mm -hmm. in a reasonable suspicion world. Yeah. What is your measure of trust? We can't really measure trust. We know that you have a study that like measures units of trust. Right. Can you explain that? Yeah, exactly. So how that study did is that it gave students uh, situations and it had them rank them from one to five, one being the least amount of trust and five being the most amount of trust. Okay. And what it saw was that when it went from one to two or three to four, we saw that so, one unit increased led to a 90% chance of a student bringing yeah. them school. So that's how we're measuring trust. So how are you measuring Wait, I have a question about that study first. Actually, because I can't, there's really no way I can measure trust, right? I can't say I trust you like 85% of the study. This study's not the way you measure Yeah, so this is, my, measure wait, this is my question about your study, right? Because that's like completely false. Mm -hmm. In a world where students don't have a lot of liberty, they don't have a lot of freedom, and they're kind of forced into saying that they trust the system, because that's the only thing that they can do under reasonable suspicion. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Because like, they're literally, they can get searched anytime, and they don't even have any right to make reasonable trust suspicion. Them. Like, they're really scared of the system, right? With probable cause, you guarantee that they actually have rights because they can't get searched. Who's scared of the system? How the many students? percent of students are scared Dude, of the system? You can't measure how many people are scared. You can't so measure how many people are trusted. I'm not there's no way, I can never quantify how much I trust someone, right? It's just a measure of, I give them, like, I give the students liberty, and that's why they trust the system a lot more because now they know they actually have rights in their school.
Focus your investigative resources towards finding actual crime, which improves the efficiency of law enforcement and teachers in stopping crime. So if anything, it's going to be a reason to vote for us. The second big reason you're going to turn this argument against them is because they say that you improve deterrence when you have more searches. The problem is in Crossfire, they contradict this argument when they say that a student cannot perceive how many searches are happening in their school. A student does not know that there were 20 searches instead of 10. But when Hugo Miala of Emory University finds that what students can perceive is the accuracy of searches, in that if I have five friends who were searched and four were found for contraband, versus having 25 friends who were searched and four were found for contraband, then I think searches are a more credible threat when four in five. So when the accuracy of search improves, he finds empirically in an economic study that there is a reduction in crime. Switch to probable cause improve deterrence, reduce crime, and their impacts do not occur. Third and most importantly, the empirical studies prove that you do not see a change in crime. First, the Glazer evidence we read you in our case tells you that when customs officials saw a higher standard, unnecessary searches fell 75%, but crime did not increase because the accuracy of searches improved. And second, according to Vox Media, when the New York policy of stop and frisk, which used reasonable suspicion, was scrapped, the amount of unnecessary searches fell by 97%, but the crime rate actually declined by one percentage point. There was no increase in crime in the real world. Their entire case presumes that crime increases and they do not win that link. They cannot access the argument of school resource officers because according to the New York Times, schools are smart enough to differentiate when crime is increasing, and even if the perception of crime increases for a week or two weeks, once they recognize that probable cause is a workable standard, we don't need these officers and their impacts do not exist. Now, they see that school resource officers are going to increase, but there are a number of reasons why this independently is also false. The Harvard Law Review finds first that the probable cause standard is actually easy enough to train the teachers that it's in school's best interest to do so instead of hiring officers. The reason is that the reasonable suspicion standard, although a lower standard, actually has more gray areas and more intricacies, whereas probable cause is more clear cut and has a warrant requirement. So if a teacher doesn't know what they're doing, then the judge will sign off on the warrant according to whether it's good or bad. This is important because a higher standard is not a harder standard. There's no reason to adopt more school resource officers when teachers can carry out the job they think that's good themselves. But second, you're actually going to be reducing the harms of school resource officers when you vote for the pro. Number one, because when you have a higher standard, like I just said in my overview, school resource officers cannot go and incarcerate anyone for minor rule violations. They have to focus on the actual crimes and not have 90% of 95% of kids who are going to prison be for minor nonviolent offenses. But second, the NAES finds that under the Supreme Court decision People versus Dilworth, which extended the reasonable suspicion standard to school resource officers, in the years that followed, the presence of SROs increased by more than 50%. This makes sense, because when SROs have more flexibility to conduct searches, schools say, we can hire these officers and get all of our searches done. But with probable cause, searches are not their main priority. They're adopting other disciplinary reforms like our contention one, and so they don't need officers. We affirm. Can I see that last part? Yes.
That's why Taylor finds that if probable cause were the standard, teachers and research officers would be forced to apply for a search warrant, and he finds that the time it takes to apply for a search warrant could be the difference between life and death. For any other impacts, you must value safety because if students aren't safe in their environment, nothing else can materialize. With that, let's discuss the overview of the state of schools right now. Keep these three things in mind as you vote in today's debate round. First come from Burke of Florida Law Review, which finds that 90% of all reasonable suspicion searches are consented to, meaning students are saying it's okay for you to search me. This really goes well with Devesh Spisigay's last speech, which indicates that nine times out of ten, people are innocent. The innocent people are the ones that are consenting to searches. The ten percent of people that don't consent to searches are the ones we must be searching for, and that's why we need reasonable suspicion. Because the ten percent of people that don't consent need to have the search in place in order to actually find that one out of ten that is not innocent. Second, according to Walker in 2012, and based on numerous polling, trust between students and their schools is at 71%, which is an all-time high. Meaning, trust is not actually low, which is what they're painting in their case, because they never read a single independent statistic that indicates that. Third and finally, that's why Nathan James finds that violence in schools is declining due to high trust levels. Real suspicion is working. Keep this in mind. Let's go to contention one on the better disciplinary policies. We have three responses. First is that counselors are more expensive than metal detectors and things of that nature, which is why we, the second response comes from Kristen Weir ABA, which finds that school districts usually have one counselor for every 3,500 students and counselors have to work between three schools, meaning other intervention policies are not successful. And they're going to come up here and tell you that, oh, well, SROs, which is what we're advocating for, cost money. That's fine. But when we find from Berger, empirically, schools prefer SROs over counselors. That's why Jason Nance finds that despite the high cost of SROs, governments pass grants and laws that allow for money to be sent to schools so they can hire these SROs. Then, third, Nancy Hanover of 2015 finds that school districts are cutting counselors left and right, which coincides really well with the last two responses. Fourth and finally, they don't explain how the restorative justice programs cannot be used in conjunction with reasonable suspicion searches. With that in mind, let's go to contention two on minorities, where they garner a lot of their offense. So, First, according to Weatherspoon of the John Marshall Law Review, changing the standard won't fix anything because in the status quo, minorities are stopped in search without probable cause or reasonable suspicion. That's why Nance, their own author, finds that when doing a comparative analysis between probable cause and reasonable suspicion, the number of racially biased searches was not any different. Second, you turn the argument against them because we of the University of Richmond explains in 2010 that the growing trend in schools is less racism and segregation. This is really important because Merkway finds that the uniquely racist actors in this round are SROs. And if you increase SROs, you increase racism. And we advocate that when you take away the deterrent of reasonable suspicion searches, schools have historically switched to SROs and they will do it again. Third, the evidence that says that decreasing unjust searches by 75% reduces crime is about reasonable suspicion searches making them less unjust. It doesn't talk about probable cause. Flow that over to our side. That garners us more offense. Finally, let's move on to their impacts. First is on trust in a system. First, remember the trust is high at 71%. Second, SROs make trust worse because we contend that a second period geometry teacher searching a student is much less untrustworthy than an SRO, that is much, less, much more trustworthy than an SRO that has never seen a student before. But second, on the school to prison pipeline, they tell you that kids are sent more to prison with, with reasonable suspicion. However, the unique actor in this round that can send kids to jail is SROs. They are forced to punish students in courtrooms rather than principal's offices. That's why test finds that when Georgia adopted probable cause in 2000, SROs increased as a result and arrests increased by 1,284%. Don't let Dinesh come up here and tell you that, oh, well that was under the reasonable suspicion standard, we can fix the probable cause and we fix it. Georgia has a probable cause standard. Obviously, SROs are going to increase arrests if you vote for my opponents. For all these reasons, we urge a negative ballot. Never says that. 
And yeah. what we were about to you say, right, what we were about question. to say, where really quickly, is that when they claim they have consent, more than eighty percent of the time, it was forced consent. And the reason what does forced, forced consent, consent mean when it teaches? I will, ex- I will explain to you right now. Number one, you're painting this picture that teachers conduct all searches, but the vast majority of schools are already using school resource officers. That's and not second, true. School resource officers are on the decline. You don't no, because they increased by fifty five percent, and you didn't respond. And second, and this is really important. The reason there is forced consent is because if I approach you and ask for consent, and I say no. I can still conduct the search with reasonable suspicion, right? Because I have that standard where there literally the is question? no standard. With probable cause, I say okay. no, and no means no, and that's what the judges should affirm the resolution. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. If a student searches, if the teacher searches a student and finds something that's not against school policies, what do they do? Wait, say it again? If a teacher searches a student, finds something that's against school rules, what do they do to the student? If a teacher searches them? Yeah. It's up to the teacher. Some of them will deal with what it. Do they, what some do they most commonly do? Probably deal with internally. I don't, I don't understand. So like, like, they both agree officers are bad. We're just saying they go down because wait, one how crime do goes down. Go down. We just explained. Number one, you're not actually proving crime increases. We were doing like four studies. We don't have to prove crime, crime increases. increases. All we have to prove that right now, reasonable suspicion is working. And we're no, proving to you, yes. That is not true. Okay. If probable we're cause is better, then that means it's going to be even better. Sure. Experience. We have we're alternative parts of probable cause. We don't have to prove that specific part. We Sorry. just have to prove that right now, reasonable suspicion is Why working. Why would officers increase with probable cause? Okay, so that's our entire thing. Yes, what is the link? Okay, so it's twofold. First comes from Tiller, who says that students are more likely to bring contraband onto school property okay. when they have Confirms, a probable right. cause. Second is the perception of violence. So even perception. if violence doesn't increase, can I finish this? That's, that's not Even true. if violence doesn't increase, the perception of violence increases. No, schools are not irrational. If you can tell if a standard works exactly the same. In fact, your own evidence would All say, school administrators are completely rational? No, what we're saying is that, let's say for two weeks, they're freaked out about probable cause, and then they realize it's literally the exact same. It's only going to take two weeks for the decrease in crime that you're talking about to materialize? I find that very year, important. It two years, but the end story is the exact same. In that two as years, they're going to really employ SROs. The SROs are going to point. increase the rest by 1,200. The point is, as long as the long term crime goes down and the perception of safety improves, then the long term there's less SROs, which means we access the long term impact of your case. Well, our short term impact, impact takes your out your link to your long term okay, impact. Really quickly, you said that in life or death situations, you have to file for a warrant, right? Um, no, I said the difference between the time it takes yeah. to file for a warrant. Didn't the Supreme Court in Terry v. Ohio find that if it's a life or death situation, you don't need a warrant? Okay, so if you're going to argue under circumstances, you put yourself into a double bind. So you have to choose no. because no, of the time. No, if it's a safety threat, you conduct the search. Because the majority of the time, time actually, the circumstances are such gray areas that schools just use them for any search they want. So either you can contend that, that warrants. So either you can contend that warrants are necessary and we make searches more like safe or like with like higher evidence, no. or you can contend that we use them for Raise the standard, seventy-five percent less searches, no change. Wait, we indicted that evidence and said that when we talked about reasonable suspicion. This is completely false and wouldn't be on our side because right now in the status quo, when students don't have liberty and they don't have freedom, they can get searched at any time. That's why 90% of searches are technically consensitive, but the best shows you that 80% of the times it's not really consensitive. They're still being searched out of the free will. Go to our case. First, look at discriminatory searches. 
They say that binary searches, uh, binary search searches are public right now, but we took that it gets a lot worse with probable cause. Uh, it gets a lot worse. Uh, it gets a lot better with probable cause. Second, they say that there's less racism in school right now, but remember, they can't be complacent. Just because there's less racism doesn't mean it can get better. With probable cause, we're going to be decreasing the amount of racism because the officials actually have to stop and think before conducting the searches. That's why Glazer that talks actually about raising the standard from reasonable suspicion to probable cause said that when we do raise the standard, the amount of unjust searches fell by 75%, but there still was not a decrease in safety. That's going to be the first reason why vote for us. Then go to trust. They said that trust is really high right now, but first of all, they can't even mention that. The second of all, logically it makes sense that when you tell students that they can't be searched for no reason anymore, that's when they trust the school a lot more. That's the logic that goes completely dropped. But then they say that probable cause to increase as uh, SROs in Georgia, but recognize that uh, reasonable suspicion in schools is going to be a Supreme Court decision. Georgia can't just go like can't just deny the Supreme Court. That's not true at all. That's why we need extending our that says that with reasonable suspicion, you're actually going to be uh, increasing the amount of unjust searches. That's why Johnson tells you that when you do have these unjust searches, the amount of people that are a lot more prone to crime increases by four times because they don't trust the school anymore. They're going to be a lot more likely to uh, have these delinquent behaviors. And Sweetin tells you that when these students are arrested, they are four times more likely to drop out and two times a lot more likely to reoffend. Now, watch their case on the number of SROs. Remember, in the first process, they completely contradict themselves because they say that they don't know how uh, students don't know how many searches there are. We tell them that we increase the accuracy of searches with probable cause because now there's actually one of the evidence. When we increase the accuracy, that deters students from committing crime because now they know that the searches are actually going to be catching them. That's why they don't want to commit crime anymore. But most importantly, when we did have reasonable suspicion in the world, uh, 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 the number of SROs decreased by 51 percent. But furthermore, their power is going to be decreasing. There's not going to be abusing them power anymore because they need evidence before they can search.
balance is going down, racism is going down, things are looking pretty good. Why does that mean that probable cause can't improve the current situation? So what we're saying is the current system is working. It's not broken. And what we see okay. is that we reach you the harm of what probable cause will bring. So ultimately what it comes down to is instead of switching to an unknown, untested state of your school, okay, it's we should tested everywhere now. Like besides in schools, schools. We should schools stick to what's working. No, that's the one that's been in schools for like yes, over 20 years. The unknown, about, untested standard is the one that doesn't exist in schools. What well, we're telling you is that reasonable suspicion is not responsible for the reduction in violence or the reduction in racism. There are other policies in place in the schools, right? Reasonable Wait. suspicion is probably dampening our efforts to counteract crime. Okay, it might be counter- probably racism. dampening our efforts, but at the point where you don't read a single piece of analysis that it actually is, and we provide evidence for the judges, and we provide evidence for the judges, and we provide evidence for the judges that indicates that reasonable suspicion is successful at deterring crime, then at this point, when you compare it, like your analysis, like from your opinion, to our evidence, mm-hmm. ours still stands at a much higher level. I don't think that's fair what you say. You were just reading a quote from someone saying reasonable suspicion is good, and then reading a bunch of unrelated stats saying crime is going down. I could say I get A's all my tests even though I don't study. Like, that unless I should start right. studying. Like, like, so that, like, unless you can point out an alternate reason as to why crime is going down, then you don't gain any access Wait, to this argument talk. because you can't like just put a burden on us. Sure. You can provide any evidence you want to the judges, but your first uh, in the first process, you guys made a contradiction that says that students don't even know how many searches there are in school. So which either really is no deterrent okay. effect. So what you're misunderstanding is it's not students who decide to hire SROs. It's the school officials. And school officials understand what a standard is. Sorry, let me finish it too quick. Let me speak. Let me explain because you have been confused about this whole round. School officials are the ones who decide whether they implement SROs or not. And they understand that we're moving to a higher standard of search. In order to, because they have a vested interest in the security of schools, and because they want to maintain the same level of security, they're going to put in other measures to Look, keep the same we level. We definitely do understand your point. What we're saying is that if students cannot perceive the difference, then the deterrence does not change. And the only reason that an, uh, like a school administrator wants to implement an SRO is because of the lack right. of deterrence. But remember, the deterrence no, we have two, wait, 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 remember we have two links in this argument. First is deterrence, and wait, you just wait, wait, no, no, what I also want you to keep ignoring is the burger part that specifically tells you that schools, when they perceive that there's an increase in violence, they want to maintain yes. the same level of security, right. so they put an SRO. If violence goes down, how would I perceive that there's an increase in violence? Okay, so first of all, in order for that impact to materialize, it's going to take a while. In that meantime, we put an SRO. So but you're even, less 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 time time class, but even time time. more, we're reading to you that SROs don't decrease. Crime. How long does your impact last? And also, a school wouldn't hire an SRO the second they adopt probable cause. It takes time. Yeah. Okay. We're saying that it's pretty much as soon as they understand that the level of security can no longer be maintained, but they'll they put a reactionary measure. The like reactionary measures are called reactionary measures because they react within a faster time frame, but like not so they react. Like like it's just because the reaction has no basis and the reaction goes away because I don't need to spend an extra 80 grand to hire an officer if I don't need it. Okay. Two years in the long term, you're 
increasing less of the perception and less of the harms. But even if the perception increases, we give you additional reasons why we reduce school resource officers. We say that when we extended reasonable suspicion to school resource officers with the people be dealt with Supreme Court case, we increase them by 50%. Because when there are more searches conducted, then schools hire more of these officers to conduct the searches. Less searches, less SROs, less arrests, and a better world for school. Now, let's focus on our case contention too about decreasing discrimination. They continually say there is racism, they say our evidence says that as well. That's not true. We call for the evidence and you can look at it as well. They are doing math with three different pieces of evidence to read this conclusion and comparing people in prison versus people being searched. We give the clearer analysis. Before and after a raised standard, you saw 75% less unjust searches. They say it's about better reasonable suspicion. No, it's not. It's about reasonable suspicion before and switching to the same standard as everyone else, which is probable cause. There was less racism. And we see that a racist search leads to a four times increase in crime because number one, these kids are being arrested for minor offenses, but number two, they're more likely to commit crime in the future. Very clear for the ballot. Vote for safety, vote for trust, vote for con. 